Hi folks, this is Jeff. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I want to do a little follow-up about some comments I've received on our tuna can scanner video that I put out a couple of years ago. People are still watching that and using the techniques there for scanning and asking a lot of questions. So I want to go over a few of those just as quickly as possible. I'll try to keep this video short. I always try to get right to the point. So let's get right into that today. All right. Uh, People are asking, will it work on color as well as black and white? I guess because I demonstrated it on black and white, there's some doubt that perhaps it does color. So I want to assure you that yes, it does color just, just fine. Uh, color works just like black and white does. You just take your picture of the negative and put it in PS Express and convert it. And you may have to adjust the white balance with the PS Express tools, but that's not hard to do you'll figure it out and there's some good YouTube videos I'm sure on that but there's a slider right there for a white balance now another person asked will it work on slides yes it'll work on slides uh, just like it does negatives but the good news is you don't have to convert it from a negative into a positive because the slides already uh, are like a positive it's not a negative so that's very easy to do uh, somebody asked about using wax paper. Uh, there, there, a question involved putting wax paper over the iPad, and then you would be able to put the glass and the negative closer to the iPad without seeing the pixels. And the idea was the wax paper would blur those pixels. Well, in my, ex in my experience, that doesn't work very well because the wax paper has a certain pattern to it uh, that shows right through the negatives and any dust or anything on the uh, wax paper or any little scratch or imperfection shows through the negatives. I think still the best way to do it is to use the box and get that um, glass, the uh, picture frame glass with the negatives in it, get that up off away from that iPad so that when you focus on the negative, the iPad pixels are blurred in the background. That seems to work. I believe laying it, taking the box out putting the glass and the negative right down on the wax paper would result in seeing the pattern of the wax paper itself. Uh, somebody ask, ask, else asked about using a light table instead of an iPad because it would be the correct white balance of the light. I think that's a good idea if you have a light table. Uh, myself, I'm just trying to show an uh, inexpensive, cheap, easy way to do this using things you might have around the house. So many people have an iPad or uh, monitor something like that they can uh, put a white background on and most people don't have a light table and what I found is light tables vary in price but can be as expensive as buying a dedicated scanner I bought a refurbished Epson V550 scanner for about hundred and thirty dollars a couple of years ago and personally I'd rather have that than a light table for the same money um, and to me, it's about what I can, what I can get for the least amount of uh, money investment to make something work. And also, I felt like a lot of people might be finding negatives around their house or their grandparents or parents giving them some old photo books and negatives, and they want to do this cheap and easy without having to buy a light table. They can uh, take that iPad they've already got, download them a white picture, put it on there, get them a cardboard box uh, like I used. I used one that something came in from the post office. Those are widely available. I use a couple dollar store picture frames, two cans of tuna, and my iPhone. And for very little investment, you know, I was able to go ahead and scan my photos. But I did this before I had the 550, but I could still do this if I was in a hurry and didn't want to take time to wait for the 550 to scan photos. This iPhone method's faster than a dedicated scanner. Okay, the next question is macro lens. I have not tried an add-on macro lens to the iPhone, but some people have, and apparently they're getting good results with those. I don't have one that I'm familiar with or would recommend to you. I'm just using the standard iPhone, and uh, I'm using the standard lens that come on the iPhone, and I'm using an iPhone 6 still, and it works pretty well, but uh, I believe if you can find a good macro lens, it might help no matter what iPhone or Android phone you're using. Now, another question I'm getting is, what about the resolution? How many megapixels are the pictures I'm getting from this tuna can scanner method? 
And to be honest, I don't know. Well, yeah, with an iPhone 6 like I'm using, I hear maybe 8 or 10 megapixels in the back camera and the selfie camera maybe, I don't know, 3 or 4 megapixels. I've heard all kinds of numbers. I don't know what the real answer is. But I'm sure that most modern iPhones or Android phones are going to have more megapixels and a better camera than my iPhone 6. And I'm pretty satisfied that my iPhone does a good enough job for what I use it for that way. It would always be nice to have a better camera, but you can get by just fine with an older iPhone or probably an older Android phone. If you have a newer one, that's much better. You're going to get more megapixels. But it will depend on the uh, particular phone you're using and the camera that it has. Uh, somebody asked about, what about putting a camera on a tripod and having it shine down on it? Well, I think if you've got a good camera with a micro lens, that will undoubtedly be better than using an iPhone because a real full-frame DSLR is going to be a lot better than a iPhone camera for that kind of use if you've got a micro lens. And uh, But here's the things you have to consider about that. First, you need to have a tripod. You need to have that camera on the tripod perfectly level so that it's not tilted off to one side because that will cause one side of your negative to be blurred when you take the picture. And that's hard to do. Doing it with the iPhone and the tuna cans, getting it level and parallel to the negative, that's easy. Doing it with the camera and tripod, it starts getting a little harder, but it can be done. Uh, the other thing is, regardless of how good a camera you have, you need a good macro lens. And those good macro lenses for a DSLR or uh, like a Sony mirrorless camera, or any of those, it's going to be quite expensive. That mirrorless lens is going to be quite expensive. That lens alone will cost you more probably than a good scanner, you know, good, especially a refurbished scanner. But if you've got all that and want to do it, I recommend trying it and see what happens because, I mean, you don't have anything to lose. If you can get good results, that's great. But for people just trying to do this casually, don't do it all the time. People that don't have a nice camera, a nice micro lens, tripod, and a way to balance it, uh, using my tuna can method is going to get them results quickly and easily without getting them frustrated and go ahead and be copying their family's memories and preserving them and not get frustrated in the process because it doesn't come out you know really good it comes out blurry or something uh, i've had people ask what can what about using a kindle or other tablet uh, instead of an ipad and that will certainly work anything that you can download a just a white plain white background and then make it full screen on your iPad or Kindle or even computer monitor laid on its back. Whatever you've got like that, that you can put a white background on, it's going to work just fine. Now I've had some people ask about PS Express, Photoshop Express, which I use the iPhone app version of that. Uh, they ask about converting a positive to a negative in the original video. It shows you exactly, uh, I list which buttons to use step by step. And, and again, once you've taken a picture and get it in your picture into the iPhone, you open that picture up in your picture album, go to the edit button, click on the PS Express emblem so that now the picture opens in PS Express, Photoshop Express. Then there's a little tab at the bottom. I select basic. And then it opens up a menu out to the side, and one of the options for basic is, uh, I believe it's negative or reverse, and that's what does it. I don't have it in front of me, and I'm using the very phone right now to tape this, but again, I'll reference you back to the original video where it covers that uh, process uh, very, uh, very precisely, where it's easy to follow and understand. Uh, now, I've got a lot of good comments, and I want to thank people for that. I'm, I'm looking over here at my computer screen as we talk. I've had 415 comments, and I must say they're overwhelmingly positive. Uh, compliments, uh, comments, uh, many questions, and I have tried to uh, reply to all the comments and all the questions. Sometimes it takes me a day or two before I do it. But I try to answer every question, reply to the comments, and I thank everybody for those questions and comments and for watching the video. I'm uh, very flattered. This little video, as of today, August the 11th, 2020, has had 233,000 views. So obviously a lot of people are out there trying to scan their family's memories 
off of old negatives. They want to do it as easily and cheaply as possible and get results and be able to share those pictures. And what makes that important to me is uh, those pictures on those negatives, uh, you know, we need to find a way to preserve them so that people don't just put them back and lose them. Uh, those negatives are a piece of time that we can't go back and reshoot. Uh, you know, were, some people have negatives from 50 years ago or 100 years ago. If we can scan those negatives and get them into digital form and send them out and get them printed, uh, where we're not risking mailing our negatives off to a lab and paying a big price for that. Perhaps we can just get them uh, into digital form, uh, get them out, get them printed, share the photos with the family, uh, put some of the pictures up to make sure we've always got them, and then uh, see uh, those images from long ago that our family and friends took. It's it's like a time machine. It's just like looking into the past. and. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody ever looks back and wish they had taken fewer pictures. Never heard of that. Most people wish they had taken more and preserved more moments from the past. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, please stay safe and uh, tune in as I hope to have some more videos up soon. And uh, God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.